Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, September 23rd, 2022, and today we're going to be talking about the state of Colorado and a brand new poll from the Hill and Emerson College that have given us new information about the governor's race and the Senate race that are telling us practically what every other poll prior to had been able to tell us previous to Labor Day. Now, the reason why we use Labor Day as this marker or indicator is because the Republican Party has been long saying that look for the Labor Day bump in favor of the GOP. As we are now 45 days-ish until the midterm elections, we have yet to see that bump come to fruition, and quite frankly, I don't think that it's going to come anytime soon. The state of Colorado is also a state where historically it has been a swing state. When you take a look at the Senate election results from 2016 and 2014, it more clearly explains how close Colorado can actually get. But it has been even closer than that. In 2010, the state of Colorado went to Michael Bennett, the Democrat who currently holds this seat, who was the incumbent at the time, by just 0.9%. It was exceptionally close, and the Democrats were in truly fighting position for the state of Colorado, and the polls had had the Republican ahead by about three points. Point is, Colorado historically has been competitive, especially in more recent history in 2016 and 2014, when it last voted for a Republican on the Senate level. 2020, it then flipped to the Democrats, but by about four points less than it voted on the presidential margin for President Joe Biden. Now, President Biden had a very good display of support in the 2020 presidential election. He won by 13.5 percent across the state. And a lot of that has led the Republican Party to realize that Colorado may be out of reach for these midterm elections. But as races like Virginia and Texas's 34th district came into play in consideration, the Republican Party decided to try to go for more. They decided to allocate funds to the state of Colorado, trying to oust Michael Bennett, oust Jared Polis, the incumbent governor of the state, both of which are Democrats, two people who they believe are detrimental to the state of Colorado and detrimental to the state of the nation. Now, if this was in midterm environment like 2010 or 2014, you might see the state of Colorado become more competitive. But realistically, it isn't. At different points in time, I even led myself into the narrative that Colorado might be competitive. But as we have gotten closer and closer to Election Day, the Republican Party's numbers simply haven't gotten better, and the Democrats have remained very consistent. When you take a look at the data that was just released from the Hill and Emerson College, I tend to trust it because it's about where the average is, and even Republican pollsters such as Trafalgar show Michael Bennett leading by about five points. The average has Michael Bennett, the Democrat in the Senate race, up by about nine points. Considering Joe Biden is no longer as popular as he once was, and Democrats are underperforming on the national generic ballot relative to their 2020 performance, it isn't too far out of the question to see Democrats leading in Colorado by about nine points. But the governor's race is significantly more lopsided in favor of Jared Polis, an extremely popular governor, uh, you know, someone who went into 2018 and won that election. We can actually take a look at that margin of victory. You're talking about t uh, eight points across the state in 2018. Fast forward to 2022, and Jared Polis actually might do better than he did in 2018. Trafalgar only had him up by about five points, but the Hill and Emerson College have him up by about 17 points. Now, which one do I exactly buy? I couldn't exactly tell you, but what I do trust about these numbers is that Jared Polis is unequivocally ahead in this governor's race. Jared Polis is running, uh, running against Heidi Ganahl. This is a Republican who many Republicans thought would be the best chance that the GOP has at winning this seat. The same thing goes for Joe Odea within the state of Colorado. He was also another candidate that Republicans thought could be a change and turn in tide, similar to how Youngkin was in Virginia for the Colorado Republican Party. However, it has been very clear that any party associated with the national GOP that is closely aligned with Marjorie Taylor Greene, with Lauren Boebert, with uh, Kevin McCarthy, those top names, Mitch McConnell, Lindsey Graham, the same people who actively have been pushing for different pieces of legislation that are not popular across the rest of America and certainly not popular in these blue states like Colorado, has made it very difficult for these Republicans to sever ties with these national Republicans. Because quite frankly, to win the general election, they also need those voters as well. So there's no reason to alienate them. It also gets called into question, you know, about just the partisanship 
about Colorado itself. The Republican Party really thought they had a chance in the state of Colorado, as did many, many people. And they thought that because these Republicans were more moderate. They saw them, again, as these Glenn Youngkin types that could revitalize the GOP within the state of Colorado. But unfortunately for them, in a post-Roe era, in a post Trump and Youngkin type of era for the midterm elections, not post-Trump, post-Youngkin. I misspoke and said the wrong politician's name. We no longer find Republicans being able to so easily distance themselves from the National Republican Party, largely because now there is much more at stake. Before, you could be independently, you know, pro-choice. You could be someone who took a positive stance in favor of the Democratic Party while still being a Republican. But fundamentally, these are still people who identify with a party that overturned a woman's right to choose in the Supreme Court. Partisan or not, the Supreme Court is very clearly composed of three Democrats and six Republicans. And it's very clear in the final vote share which party went to what. And voters are not easily going to take that. And these numbers reflect that. It also is something about just the fact that the Republican Party allocated funds to the state of Colorado. You can see where Mitch McConnell decided to throw money into the race in Colorado, and also the national uh, Republicans also funneled money into the governorship. Because Colorado, again, in any other type of red wave year, should be conservative, should be more conservative than it is traditionally, and should be more competitive. But that didn't happen. It didn't happen because Michael Bennett, Jared Polis are simply too popular, and Republicans, quite frankly, are simply unpopular. Jared Polis and Michael Bennett probably won't win by the margin that President Biden did back in 2020, but they have a lot of room to fall. A 14-point drop-off before you hit Republicans being in the advantage. That's quite good, if you ask me, and puts them in a very, very good position. Especially looking back at 2016, it's good news for Michael Bennett that he outperformed Hillary Clinton in 2016 when many other candidates did not. When you take a look at our races here, New Hampshire was narrower than it was on the presidential level. Pennsylvania went to the GOP more than it did for Trump. Wisconsin, the same as well. North Carolina as well. Ohio as well. Florida as well. Iowa as well. Georgia, Arizona. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Yet Colorado, individually, was a shining star in the regard that it voted for Michael Bennett larger than it did for Hillary Clinton in 2016. In 2014, though, the Republican Party did have that redeeming factor that they were able to win the race here. But since then, they have yet to win a race. However, the Senate race was underperformed by the Democrats. John Hickenlooper won by about nine points statewide, despite President Biden again winning by about 14 points across the state of Colorado. Now, the GOP is also in a position where this race probably would be more competitive simply if Roe v. Wade was not overturned. I remember my estimation for Colorado following Glenn Youngkin's victory in that it was Colorado was still going blue, but not by an overwhelming amount. And that since has changed. And I think it has changed because, again, there is more at stake on this ballot than there was previously, in addition to the fact that when you have such a hyperpolarized state, one that is a swing state and has known competitive nature throughout its entirety of its existence, in addition to the fact that Democrats have been more recently locking it down, it gets harder to sway voters to either side of the aisle, especially when you have these hot button issues being really utilized when it comes down to these individual races. For instance, the Democrats are using abortion as a scare tactic to force, not force, to encourage voters to vote for Michael Bennett and to vote for Jared Polis. It's a strategy that has been utilized but never really had much merit when it came down to the issue of reproductive rights up until recently. And Democrats are happy about that. They're not happy that Roe v. Wade is overturned, but they're happy that they can finally use this as a means of campaigning, and it actually means something. Because while they did try to utilize it before, voters very clearly did not think it was important enough for them to vote on that issue. But looking at where they are now, voters would have narrowed down the state of Colorado as we have gotten closer to Election Day. It's also something to be said that despite being the quote-unquote electable Republicans, Joe Odea is at 36% in the most recent poll, and Heidi Ganahl is also at 36%. The fact that Jared Polis is at 53%, the fact that Michael Bennett is at 46 means you need very little of the remaining undecided vote to go towards the Democrats for victory, and the victory in the governor's race is already there. Meaning that Democrats, quite frankly, are doing well in both of these races, and there's nothing the GOP can do to stop it. These leads are large enough, too, that I will say the Republican Party has about a 1% chance, or less, at victory in the state of Colorado at this point. Even if it does inevitably narrow up, I still am wholeheartedly confident that Michael Bennett and Jared Polis win their respective races. 
these races would have been extreme flips. They would have been the ones that were entirely unexpected and entirely out of the ordinary. But considering recent special elections, recent polling data, recent fundraising data, and everything under the sun, the Democrats are more than likely going to come out ahead here. And looking back at 2018, what we found was that amongst the polling data, there wasn't exactly a single super accurate poll besides one that was taken just a week before the election from on-site slash Keating. Beyond that, you just had Republican and Democratic internals, but all of them seemed to indicate that Jared Polis was going to win. When you look back at 2020, you also found a very similar story. The University of Colorado and YouGov did a poll that showed Biden ahead by nine. Uh, Survey USA showed one with Biden ahead by 10. He ended up winning by 14 points. And when you look back at uh, when you look ahead to future elections, you find that polls are telling us a similar story to what they told us back in 2020 that Joe Biden wins by about 10 points statewide. It seems that voters are not super willing to commit to backing the Republicans on really any of the races. Whether it's governor, Senate, or president, the GOP seems to be falling off significantly when it comes down to overall expressed support. I don't think that you find Michael Bennett winning by 12 points. I don't think that you find uh, Jared Polis winning by 12 points. But what I do think is that you absolutely find them winning. And you very rarely see the polls being too far off. And the last time they actually were off was in 2010, when they said the Republican Party was going to win. And ultimately, the Democrats did instead. That's also something that I take into consideration as I look at some of these numbers, because historically, the polls haven't overestimated Democrats to the extent that you might think. Looking back at the Senate race, though, I will say that it was practically spot on. There was no ever overestimation on either side of the aisle. They said Hickenlooper plus eight, Hickenlooper plus nine, and the final margin ended up being Hickenlooper plus nine. The only problem here that I would say is that it coincided with the presidential results and showed slightly better results on the presidential level. You're talking about a four to five point drop off between the results in the Senate race and the presidential race. And that wasn't necessarily accurately gauged by these polls, but generally they got the victors correct. And you're finding that to be true here now. The Republican Party definitely messed up. Uh, when they spent money in Colorado, despite everybody saying this race was not going to be competitive, it really also speaks to the fact that they are out of money as they head into states such as Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, etc. The Republican Party is struggling, not only in Colorado, but also, for instance, in the Arizona Senate race, where Mark Kelly is winning by about eight points, or depending on the other poll, by 12 points. They are struggling in a race where they have an incumbent who has won two elections back to back, who is only winning by about two points statewide, despite this race never even being on the radar for Democrats following the November victory for the GOP. You also see this to be true in other races. The Democrats might be down in the Nevada Senate race by three and four points, but these are Republican pollsters. And quite frankly, even even if they lose there. They're winning in other parts of the country. For instance, Pennsylvania, uh, you find that John Fetterman is up by five points over Dr. Oz. As I showed you, Colorado, Michael Bennett is up by 10 points. In New Hampshire, the Democrats, Maggie Hassan is up by eight points. You take a look at a bunch of these races, and guess what? The races are going towards the Democrats, or they are quite close. Looking at Georgia, Warnock leads by two. In Ohio, the Democrats only losing by one. This is a Trump plus eight state. Florida, Marco Rubio, the electoral juggernaut who won by eight in 2016, is only winning by four at this point in time. I mean, all of the numbers are telling us a very good story for the Democratic Party, and Colorado is no different. It's eerily reminiscent of where we were back in 2018, but that's good news for the Democratic Party. But quite frankly, very bad news for the GOP. Because I've started to feel how I felt four years ago when I logged onto Real Clear Politics and I saw these numbers and started to draw conclusions from them. Because most of these numbers were telling us a very similar story to what they were telling us four years ago. The national generic ballot may not be the same in terms of overall numbers, but the victors are. These Senate numbers may not be the same as they were four years ago or even six years ago, but a lot of the numbers are consistent and a bunch of them are significantly better for Democrats than they were in years past. Taking a look, for instance, at the state of Pennsylvania, you can see back in 2016, the polls were back and forth. Pat Toomey, Katie McGinty went back and forth throughout the entirety of the campaign season. As of now, John Fetterman has maintained a super significant lead across the state. You find this in many other states, including Colorado, but looking back at historical polling within the race itself, you will see that while Democrats did hold on, they did slightly underperform. They maintained a consistent level and consistent lead across this entire race. 
I'm excited to see what the final results are in the state of Colorado, but I want you to take away from these uh, numbers and from our analysis here, the Democrats are doing well in Colorado. It may have been obvious to say, but it certainly is a race that the GOP at least partially was invested in, thought about, considered to be a race that was worth investing in and a race that potentially could have gone their direction. Had this been a better year for the Republican Party, like 2010, like 2014, if we were truly in that type of national environment, I would buy it. But unfortunately for them, we aren't, and the Republican Party is no close to victory, no closer to victory in Colorado than they were two years ago. And quite frankly, that's embarrassing, considering where we are nationally and where these candidates are in terms of moderateness, in terms of stances, in terms of whatever it might be. The fact that Colorado is becoming increasingly and increasingly more out of, uh, out of reach for the GOP really shows how voters are pushing back on their national party rather than the individual candidate. And ultimately, the Democrats benefit from that decision by the voters. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 Senate election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.